this graph uh, and this book uh, are a little bit of hope for today. Uh, this is a snapshot of all the data I have from all the various revenue streams, trying to add more revenue streams for the channel. And this is a graph of daily earnings over time and a linear regression on that data. This blue sticky moment on April 24th was a turning point because it marked six months until the channel would be financially viable. But look what happened next. We, and I do, I do mean we, like me with the camera and the books and you with the views and the likes and the Patreon supports and the affiliate purchases uh, are decreasing that six months and now it's closer to two and a half months. About 200,000 of you watched uh, my comments on medical apartheid in my review of David Epstein's range, and look what that did to the model. Boop! Y equals MX plus B is the formula for slope. We're dragging the slope up by sheer force of will. So I wanted to say thank you again, uh, not just for the people that join on Patreon. I know not everyone can do that. I've added a dollar a month tier, and I have people all the way up at the $100 a month level, which is bonkers to me. But it's me and the blank spots on the bookshelf are just because they're all out and I'm thinking about them all right now. I want to show you a little bit from this book, The Education of an Idealist by Samantha Power. She's been a war reporter reporting on genocide. She got gay rights on the agenda at the UN. She got Russia to stop funding chemical weapons in Syria. She has done a lot of good things. She's a UN ambassador. Her book's endorsed by Obama, Rachel Maddow, Cheryl Strait. And get this. Also... Brian Stevenson. Any book endorsed by Brian Stevenson, I will read. There are a lot of lessons in this book, including deep philosophical questions about moral idealism in the title versus the reality of getting things done in this practical and imperfect world. When you're the UN ambassador or when you're in the Situation Room with Obama, you have to make hard decisions. And sometimes those decisions involve compromises. It's not morally clear cut, and it's quite interesting for that reason alone for me as a nerdy philosopher kid, but that's not the reason why I'm bringing up the book. I'm bringing it up because of models and how sometimes we outpace the model. As a millennial who's on TikTok a lot, I see a lot of doomerism and despair and a feeling that there just straight up isn't anything to be done about the forces of darkness that run the world. Because she's an unmitigated badass, she was speaking at the UN during the Ebola crisis, trying to encourage countries to do the right thing about this disease. Her words apply to Ebola, they could apply to climate change, they could apply to gun violence, they could apply to anything, read with me. Anything where the models make us feel despair. These models show what could happen if we continue to let fear, inaction, or indifference drive our response. Models are forecasts of the future, but it is we who actually determine our future. Individuals make history, not models. Happy reading.